Charles Robert Darwin. The man who's got his own award show named after him. Oh, that's a new contender just now. He probably just had bad eyesight and adapted by moving to a less visually impaired position. Going in a resting position to conserve energy, very good. Making hand signs to attract a maid, very convincing. Telling us current mate, no worries, you're still my favorite. So come on, come out here and give me a hug. No? Well, okay, at least you tried. Salute to you. And as a desperate final attempt, he thinks maybe this high pitched maiden call will actually make her interested. Absolutely marvelous. I wonder what genes influence that behavior. When you think of Darwin, you probably think of this giraffe example. This is, however, not evolutionary based, as it happens within the same lifespan, believing that if you stretch enough, your neck will grow to double the size. Lots of boys would like that to be true. This theory is found by John Baptiste Lamarck, the same guy that talked about vital fluids, and it actually came before Darwin. Darwin started his evolutionary journey when he got his daddy to pay for a trip around the world on the HMS Beagle at age 22. Darwin at the time wasn't exactly sure what he was looking for, but he just brought fossilized plants and remains on board to study, many of which the world have never seen, and started questioning the behavior and abilities of these animals. One day he started throwing an iguana from the Galapagos in a deep pool, the things you do for science. And even though he could swim, it would swim straight back to shore every time. Darwin believed that even though it seems stupid, it must be because the shore has no enemies for the iguana while the deep waters do, so actually it was very smart. After his adventurous trip, and not being significant for about 20 years, whew, that hits close to home. In 1859 he published The Origin of Species, or to be more precise, on the origins of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Very catchy. Introducing natural selection to the world. The idea that species pass on their genes to offspring, and those who aren't able to survive or reproduce aren't able to do so and die out. A shining example of this is for example the polar bear, which was once upon a time a brown bear that traveled too far from home. Disney made a movie about it. A gene mutation made it so the fur on one of these bears became white, which just so happens to be very useful for camouflage in arctic areas. You see those brown dots coming from a mile away so they weren't as efficient in catching prey in the arctic caused them to die out over time and polar bears to actually take their place. Then in 1871, Darwin found out that peacocks having a major fancy tail which served no survival purpose isn't too much in line with his theory. So he proposed an additional theory, sexual selection. Saying that, well surviving is fun and all, but I mean have you tried sex? Good stuff, people tell me. Arguing that being likeable for a partner is also quite important for survival, so animals figure out a way to show that off. A well-nourished peacock has brighter colors and a bigger tail than a malnourished peacock, telling a peacock partner that, if you have a big tail, you must be pretty well off. Gold digging has never been so blatant. Now this sums up the major aspects of Darwin's life. Now let's check out one more award contender.